Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Ben Stewart, Bible teacher. And this week, we took a second look of things that are affecting just our culture and our climate. And last week, we looked at technology. This right. week, we looked at money. Right. Welcome back. Yeah, yes, I great. love this. Yeah, nice. um, Just the way that you're bringing in different parts of our culture and how, as Christians, do we respond to the different issues and climates and things that affect us. Yeah. Um, looking at money, we talked a lot about generosity. Um, and so we did have a question come around Great. around some of the things you said about that. And one of the questions that, uh, that you said was, you said, where there's generosity, God will provide, um, encouraging us to be generosity and face our fear of right. provision. Yeah. Uh, this is asking in the context of where people are dying from lack of food and water. Water. In other words, if you were to give, if they were to give, would God provide food and water? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, um, the, the calls to be a generous person in the Bible aren't dependent on when your income level passes a certain threshold. I mean, that was the passage I read in the beginning, 2 Corinthians 8. It says, they were in affliction and extreme poverty. So he was like, that was their situation. Affliction, extreme poverty. But they had an overwhelming joy. Because they know, I follow a king that became poor to make me rich. And he said, so they gave in accordance with their means, is what Paul says. He's like, they, they didn't have a lot. He's like, you're looking at the Philippians, they weren't going to meet the financial need we had. They don't have that much. But, um, but they did it. They lived a generous life. And, and the Bible is always pushing that forward, is that we're meant to be people that care about other people. And if you look at societies that think that way, I'm going to care about the people around me. Those societies tend to win. It's selfishness when we all silo off and protect ourselves and let me build my little kingdom and I don't care what happens in yours. Those cultures tend to lose. And so it's interesting to get a situation like that where you go, well, what if someone only has one piece of bread and they give it away, they're gonna die, right? They don't have any bread. You're like, well, I can't play hypothetical scenarios. What I can say is that the Bible calls us to be generous no matter what happens. I mean, Paul will tell Thessalonians, he'll praise them. You joyfully visited the Christians in prison mm -hmm. and you joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property. So just keep in mind who he's talking to. It was people that were under severe persecution. They said, if we align ourselves with Christians, we lose everything. And they said, you joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property. Hmm. Like that's the Christian. It says, I so believe in the kingdom God's building. I'll risk everything for it. And I know that when we all think that way, we're all going to win. And so how does all that work out, the mechanics of it? I don't know. And I'm not being super mystical of God will just make bread appear, but he does that. He did that with the widow of Zarephath. He, he does it all the time. God says, I want to dare you to believe I'm real. Hmm. And uh, so uh, I think if Christians gave, I don't think there would be any of those hungry people, quite honestly. Yeah, so, we saw so a lot I of that would question in, the premise. <laughs> yeah. in, in what you were looking at and yeah. looking at the resources that we yeah, have and what the world needs. Of bread yes. if you'd give, yeah. So, <laughs> Good. You know, I don't know. Good. But. Um, okay, so you did mention there were several things that you just couldn't, didn't have time to get into the yeah. particulars about so many things. So right. there was a question that came around. Um, does the Bible give us any guidelines for tithing? What does that look like? Yeah, the, the tithe is a long conversation. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to unpack all of it. You know, I mean, you do see like Abraham in the Old Testament. Before there's a law, like before Moses got the law, Abraham was giving 10% of his... Uh, treasure after a successful battle to the priest of God. And then in the Old Testament, there's a, you would give a certain 10% to certain parts of the worship of God. But if you take the whole law, by the end of it, they were providing for the poor, the widow, the stranger, the Levite. You go, they were giving more than 10% in the Old Testament. So we don't have an exact percentage. Some people say it's 25, 30% of their income. God was constantly pressing them, live a generous life and I will take care of you. And uh, so that was the Old Testament. In the New Testament, it's pushing you to do the same. So should you give 10%? Yeah, I think Jesus talked about the religious people doing that. And he's like, and, uh, and uh, praying, he's like, you should have done both, not neglected the former. So I, uh, for me, I think generosity is not a number, it's a pursuit. 
And so for Donna and I, we decided early on, we want not just the dollar amount to keep going up, but the percentage of income to go up. And, and that's a different kind of thinking of when I die, do I want to say I had my comfortable kingdom or do I want to say I leveraged out to build yours? And for Jesus, he said, I'm not going to own a home, close, and then I'm going to get murdered for this cause. No one's going to give more than I did. And his disciples gave the same way. So I do think there should be a bend towards generosity in us. Does he demand we don't provide for our families? No, we can. And there's a place to enjoy life. There really is. And so you don't want to minimize that. But there's a mentality of I am building a different kingdom. And so I won't store up for mine. And uh, so for me, that's where 10% in my mind is a great place to start. That's good. Um, And talking about starting, one of the questions we had come in is, um, you mentioned a lot of places people can give. Um, How do we determine where we start giving? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, you know, when I came around finances early in my life, you're like, okay, I want to give, save, and spend. Those are the three I want to do. And I want to do it in that order. I want to give to the cause of Jesus in the world. I want to save to provide for my family Mm -hmm. and then spend to live the day-to-day life we live now. And um, for Donna and I, we struggled through the percentages on these. And early on, we thought in giving, let's start with where we are. We're a part of a church community in our town. You've joined a body of believers that are trying to push back the darkness, be a difference in the kingdom of God in your neighborhood. Fund that. Those are your people. And so for us, we just decided our 10% is going to go to our local church. I think your local church is where you start. You go, these are the people I've linked arms with and said, we're the people of God in this neighborhood, in this place. And that's where I would start. And some people do all their giving to their local church. And that's mm-hmm. great because then maybe their church gives to other places. Right. If you they have a church that's real missional. So many places. Yeah. Then you go, okay, mm-hmm. I trust y'all. Like if you trust the leadership of your church, you go, then I went in on that. It's like investing in stock. You're like, I trust that guy. Just invest for me. You go, I didn't trust this church. I'm going to invest in it. You know, mm-hmm. and I trust the leadership of the church to, to steward that. Other places, like for us, we go, we're going to give this percentage to our church. And then we have these missionaries we want to support. We have these causes we want to come around. And then every year crises come up and we want to come at those and go, how are we going to be a part of solving that? And so um, I think you start in the house you're in. Uh, and then you pray and see what God may have you do. And it may surprise you. I, I know some guys that some of the best, most generous people I know, they sit down every year and they really seek the Lord. Where would you have us give? And that's like a big priority. And I go, man, so many people don't even ask that question. And they've landed in different places, translating the Bible, serving refugees. Who knows where God may lead you, but start at home and then see what God puts on your heart. Great. Yeah. Great word. Great to have you back again. Thanks. Looks like fine. we're wrapping up the year with you. Yeah, this yes, is it. This, this is, is it. it. So, so I just you, wanted to challenge you're people gonna have and then a... head out. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for both of these Advent messages and many blessings for the Stewart family for you guys to have well, a magical Christmas with the little ones thanks. and yeah. everything that's happening Merry with Christmas you guys. To you guys. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here at Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.